Well, how's it go with the song in the back? <laughs> if you go onto it's the, in, go onto the Inman site, onto the video, and they link it. This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 99 of The Real Word. Word is up. Give me some J. But a racket ain't one, you know? Ooh, we should do our own parody. Well, there you go. There's so many We're things. We're going to talk about the parody There's at the so end of this There's so many things I want to do in, in my life. That really? would be on a bucket, that's list. On the bucket list. Yeah. We should have like a racket. What were you saying a before the show? List. You were gonna do. You were gonna start your own show. Oh, you're gonna rip off this week's marketeer. No, there's so yeah, many yeah. things I want to do. Remember, I was gonna do white leg. The white leg one would be great. It's gonna be amazing. That would be. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into it. Wait, We've but got... we have to establish the fact that establish this away. week, episode ninety nine, mm. Byron is tanner than me. That's true. Well, congratulations. A bit. Felt like it was wearing off in the shower today, so I put some lotion on. Ooh. You know, like when you have that fresh tan and then it starts to get a little. I hate that. Little dead you on you. You have to keep moisturizing. It's the only way. Forever. Forever. Maybe that's why I'm so. You light. have to moisturize. I never moisturize. Oh my god, I moisturize my ah. head to toe every morning. We figured it out, Suave. I'm not moisturizing. You have to moisturize. Especially that's why this I look time so of white. year. Oh my oh, gosh, okay. like I could probably do tic tac toe on your hands. Yeah. That's such a shame. Wow, that's crazy. All right, I, I will start moisturizing for the. The real work piece. So the next week, though, 100. We get 100 next week. We've got big plans. No big plans. Big plan. I don't. Something. I mean, we've been talking about plans. Nicole's the creative one. She's going to come up with a plan here. Hell. All right. Let's get into our two rackets. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to give you who we thought was the better marketeer of last week, who I thought and Nicole thought. And we thank got you a lot for of people feedback. were people. People were giving feedback. Yeah. So thank you. People were judging, thinking that like. Judging. Yeah. I'm thinking that, well, they were predicting, mm -hmm. I should say predicting, who predicting. they who they thought that we were going to We also about. have a new marketeer of this week that was sent into Inman, so we got a lot of good stuff coming Such up. Such good stuff. Let's start with Zillow. Why not, right? I mean, Byron, Is it all Zillow? It's all about Zillow. Byron loves Zillow. Oh, it is all about Zillow. Uh, no, that's just re referencing the Zillow uh, study. According and, to Zillow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why not? All right. So Hashtag Zillow. Racket number one, the Zillow CEO, Rich Barton, of course, wants or dreams of a home trade in service basically experience. the ability for you experience right that's mm -hmm. how they phrased it they did uh the ability for the homeowner mm -hmm. to have a trade in option mm -hmm. on their home mm -hmm. not quite right it's a little bit uh just a nice way of saying having everything under one roof so it's super interesting to me because I do enjoy my trade-in experience with my car, although I'm a leaser. Are you a leaser? Do you yeah, lease? I'm a leaser, you lease, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm always trading in and getting a new one and I love all that whole experience. I feel like and I love I do love this idea because you could you could essentially go into a Zillow home and they know who you are. You already have a mortgage. Like you've obviously done all they've done all of the sort of leg work before you even started well, the that, search that's the one thing about getting you into the app as a consumer yes. right they're collecting so much data on you now well, what you like but what you i'd don't like, like to think that if they're approving you because they're saying that you have a mortgage you're ready to go they have to be doing this a little is bit this of, is the vision here so yes. so the vision is in a world where you would be uh having your mortgage set up ready it's in the app. Yes. You can, you're going to get notifications yes. in the app or whatever this looks yes. like of like, hey, you need to do this. You need yes. to keep this updated. Uh, lock yep. into your rate. Love it. Like, you know Have to. when your mortgage is good and not good. Here's where when and I wrote this down in my notes here. Here's okay. when the process actually happens quickly. The home buying process. Mm -hmm. When the mortgage process gets shorter. Well, I think if, if, if as long as Zillow is holding the loans, holding their own loans, holding their own mortgages, the process can be very short. Right. So, so they, and this is Rich Barton speaking on CNBC. So mm -hmm. nothing that's not public. It's on the show Closing Bell. Uh, and he shared a bunch of the insights that we've been talking about, the changes mm -hmm. that Zillow's making. Okay, so he wants to have, uh, he wants profitable, he's, he claims, transactions including mortgage, title, escrow, telecommunication mm -hmm. services, and moving everything all under one 
roof, right? Yeah. I mean, to finish my thought from the very beginning, again, I love trading in my car, right? Mm -hmm. Here it is, dirty, take it. Yeah. I get a new one. I just Tires are bald. feel like this is too easy. I feel like there's got to be a little bit more emotion, but I guess not. I guess when you're ready to sell and like Zillow is willing to take it for an amount and you can buy a new one. I well, mean, we said this from the start, not every buyer, it's not going to be a hundred percent of anything, but is it? certainly easier to keep everything all in one place if you like the Zillow app experience, if you like the experience that they're providing. Uh, is it easier for you to keep your transaction bundled in the same place? Maybe they're now, you know, they did say title, maybe they're now gonna give in attorney states, attorney options. Like having everything in one place mm -hmm. and not so fragmented as real estate has been, you have to rely on your real estate agent mm -hmm. so much because if they don't have trusted advisors, if they don't work with good people, if they're just trying to connect you with the people that are gonna hook them up, then you're not gonna have an overwhelmingly good experience from start to finish. We've been saying it like so much the last couple Gosh, months and I hope everybody's listening. Could you imagine buyer's listening. remorse? I buyer's mean, remorse, holy maybe, right? hell, there wouldn't even be any time for buyer's remorse. But, but what we've been saying is they are not an advertising platform anymore. Right. They are a transaction model. I think it's worth mentioning, it happened last week, Greg Schwartz, who's been there for years, is now out, right? Spencer Raskoff, earlier in the year, the CEO, Rich Barton, coming back into the scene. As they make this drastic switch from advertising platform to transaction model, they are basically the brokerage, the cardist, the whatever on top of the transaction before everything trickles down to brokers in this model going forward. Mm -hmm. You need new players to lead it. I think Greg was really involved in the Premier Agent program. I'm actually a, a little... Um, You're sad? No, I'm not sad. Ooh. I think I think Greg's made a lot tearing? of money. I'm not tearing at all. Uh, I think I'm just a little bit like, oh, shucks. Somebody that's been so involved knew some of the names of the Premier Agents, right, is now out. Uh, they've got new players in place to lead a charge. They're doing things much differently than they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. You can argue, and I'm reading through the comments, oh, they used our money to build this or you know, through the advertising platform. Well, well, a lot of agents made a lot of money off of that advertising platform, and they're telling you straight up they are a transaction model now, not an advertising platform. You can look at the revenue in the third quarter of the Zillow Homes program, Zillow Offers, right? Uh, mm -hmm. 384.6 million in revenue in the third quarter. That was out of 19 markets. They're into 21 markets now. Mm -hmm. That revenue is going to keep that quarterly revenue Ooh, is going to keep exploding. It's giving you a number. 80,000 homeowners have requested an offer through the program. And that's in 19 markets. They now are operating in 21 and they just... Uh, announced that they're going to be opening in Los Angeles here very soon. So fun. Insider info. I, I think I know who got the ZO for Los Angeles. Hmm. hmm. Wasn't the one I was pulling for, but it's too bad. I mean. So here's the thing. Yes. You can you can go through these comments, and I urge you to go. We've got the article linked up that I'm referring to here. This is a, a Patrick uh, Kearns article. I feel like I should article. read the comments. Yeah, read I'm the sorry. comments. Go through the comments. There are a lot of people that are just venting, right? They're not uh, having a conversation about how to use this to your to their advantage. Agents, mm -hmm. I love you guys, but stop going in here and just blaming Zillow or blaming other agents for making Zillow uh, the, the strong beast that it is. It's over, it's happened. Uh, he's, they're talking about like the shift from DVDs to streaming mm -hmm. and then original content at Netflix. Right. Guess who sits on the board of Netflix since day one? Rich Barton, the CEO of Zillow. He's been there since day one. He saw them transition. So now think advertising model, transaction model. The transition's happening, they're moving forward. This is going to happen. Yeah, I've been saying it for years. Commission compression is here. If you watched any of these 99 episodes, I have been saying commission compression for years. It is here. And if you wanna have leads with Zillow, if you want 10 to 20% of your business to be a Zillow pillar, that commission is gonna get compressed the end now i urge everybody like we've always been saying mm -hmm. to do what to build a brand <laughs> to build a brand so you don't have to worry about all of this I, stuff I, you don't I, have to worry about what rich is saying on cnbc yeah i feel like you have a lot of sound bites in there you you dropped cardis you dropped Ooh. commission compression we got you, a lot of you dropped tags? zillow you did there was 
you were going through your list. Commission there. compression is the one that that uh, I always yeah. talk about. I mean, and when you hear th them say things so bluntly, we're dreaming of a trade in experience. Right. These I, are things that are going to happen. They're not dreaming of them. They're, they're going to happen. It's going to be interesting. I'm actually kind of excited to see it. But I do think that there's still going to be a little bit. I feel like they're I, you cannot eliminate the emotion. And I think well, emotion is going to be a involved. Bit, a little the, too simple here, but no, no, no. The, the, let's get into that a little bit because there's going to be emotion in a real estate transaction. Uh, the emotion, I think, really gets ignited when people are having a bad experience within that transaction. When, Potentially, when one of the uh, levers of the transaction, when one of the core pillars, players, mm -hmm. people involved, maybe isn't getting back, maybe isn't doing as much as uh, another player in that transaction. When it's all intertwined into one experience, yeah, I'm hearing all couldn't that. Couldn't you argue that the, that uh, experience could get better if I agree? They do I, a great job. I also think that there is a little bit of a process process when it comes to selling and buying, and if it's as if it's going to be as easy as to, tr to trade in a home to then buy a home in such a short time frame. And they're not necessarily trading in. It's just going to feel like you're trading yeah, in okay. because everything just, is. I'm hearing. In the same I'm hearing bundle. all that. I guess I just feel like you know to 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 sort of. Cr crunch the time frame down so much it just I feel like leaves so much time for like regret and mm -hmm. you know like after the fact I don't know I mean look at even um like uh, what's that auto trader the, the not auto trader what's that um CarMax. CarMax I mean they give you five days after seven days to bring the car back you know if you don't like it it's just I wonder if that you know what I mean there's just anyway maybe with the, the homes that they own that, that could be a possibility you could go try it out for five Ooh, days. Maybe they want to sit down with me. I think yeah. I have some other ideas. You have some more? Maybe. Send them in a, send them in a rich. Greg's not there anymore. So <laughs> send, send them in a rich. All right. All right. So uh, I, don't think, I don't think it's a racket that some consumers will feel uh, the trade-in experience if they put everything through the yes. app in the future in the Why coming not? days and so on. All right. Racket number two, also a Patrick Kearns article. A lot of love on episode 99, two Patrick Kearns article hmm. from Inman. Maybe he wants to be on 100. Yeah, Patrick, we got to meet you someday. All right. Uh, Patrick writes, silver tsunami set to hit housing market over the next two decades. Decades, Baby boomers are set to vacate their currently occupied homes at a much higher rate, according to a, a Zillow, Zillow study. study. <laughs> yes, right? right. How, how much have I been saying this if you watch back? Episodes one yeah. through ninety-eight. Yeah, so I think what's interesting here, though, is that it could be looked at from multiple angles because um, they're actually talking about Arizona and Florida potentially being hit the hardest because that's where um, the baby boomers have retired to. So obviously they are not only talking about vacating, they're talking about pa passing on because mm. um, obviously there will be a huge influx of inventory probably in those retirement um, communities that they're talking about. I do think though on the flip side, I mean, we're actually seeing it a lot up here in Connecticut already. They're leaving here to go to retire. So I think we're already seeing it here. People are leaving um, and obviously not nearly as many buyers as there are sellers, um, which is making for an, a little bit more of an interesting housing market. But again, you kind of have to look at it both ways. Like, are you seeing, because we're talking about vacating, right? Mm -hmm. Baby boomers are set to vacate their currently occupied homes. So I'm currently assuming occupied. that- They're moving somewhere if they're not dying. Right. So- Right. So it sounds like maybe the the cooler weather climates maybe hit harder than the warmer yep. climates. Yes. So from 2007 to 2017, roughly 730,000 homes were released into the market by seniors age 60 and older. I've seen a bunch of people personally that are under 60, between 50 and 60, get ahead of this. Yes. So they're not taking that into account. But 60 and over, 730,000 homes in the last decade. From 2017 to 2027, it's expected to go up to 920,000. And then from 2027 to 2037, it's expected to go up to 1.17 million homes released into the market by seniors age 60 and up. Yeah. So we continue to talk about a housing shortage of good inventory, which yeah. creates demand for new development especially affordable uh, new development. A lot like where we are in Connecticut, a lot of these homes where a, a senior, 60, age 60 and older mm -hmm. owns 
are like bigger square footage homes, homes that not necessarily the millennials. Well, they were also want built in. The, right they now. were also built in the '60s, '70s with like mm-hmm. the dark wood trim and the knotty pine cabinets and the shag carpeting. Um, so definitely, the style is yeah. for sure different. So what maybe I get not out of this is necessarily size in all cases, but as a real estate agent for me, and what I want a lot of agents to think about, what I take out of this, something I've been saying a lot, is don't just focus on how do I reach the millennial consumer on Instagram. Don't just focus on that millennial buyer or seller, which there, there's less millennial sellers obviously than there are buyers at mm-hmm. this point. I think for the next 10, 15, 20 years, you should be focusing on first, how do I capture that baby boomer market? What does that allow you to do? It allows you to lift your price range, your your uh, your volume number at the end of the year, your average sale price. It allows you to lift that up when you're working a lot of times with 60 and older, right? It just makes sense. The millennials are typically, depending on the city you're in and all that, gonna buy at a lower price point. They're also, if they're not dying, moving somewhere to your right. point you can get a referral down uh, if they're relocating to one of these sunshine states or they might be moving staying into the community at a we've seen it in the new development 66 high street check it out that we work here in connecticut uh, we've seen people sell and then buy a more expensive but better floor plan smaller uh, square footage unit mm-hmm. for the next decade or two decades of their life. Yeah, I think the I think the hardest thing that I'm running, and again, what do you always say? There's 59 states, and then there's Connecticut. I mean, obviously our market is no, no, no. there's 59, 49. Well, 49. I'm sorry, 49 right. states. Sorry, hiccup. 49 states, and then there's Connecticut. Um, T F well, said that last time. Yeah, I, was I mean, saying there, I, 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 and again, I'm totally going on a different different path here i just it's hard though to especially in our state um because it it it, it, you're if you're a move up buyer it's the right time to buy right but if you're like a move down buyer like these it's it's a little bit it's a little bit more they almost have to leave who has to leave well like they said like the baby boomers have yeah to well no like because then they're to like to 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 move down to sell their their well they usually have to leave at a loss of what they think their big house is worth right yeah, yeah. right so again it is a little bit more difficult to educate the the move you know the, the 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 retirement community in this state if they're staying than the move up because it, it just it you, well they move up lose, in price they move down in square footage yeah yeah yeah, yeah but it's uh, anyway but that's a lifestyle decision. A lot of people no, at that point are like, hey, yeah, I want the new thing. I can afford it. I can. I want to walk downtown or whatever it may be so I can afford that. So I'm willing to sell because to I think the point you're at is there's not enough uh, <laughs> millennials willing, I'm so clear this morning. willing to absorb <laughs> those bigger homes. So they got to take a loss there. And, and anyway. Well, especially because, again, most of them are probably outdated. Right. Anyway, the numbers going up, there's going to be more inventory to deal with. I, th- I don't think all of this inventory unless there's huge demand at any given time is going to to your point the older inventory sell at a premium right but it is all going to get listed by somebody there Mm -hmm. are going to be agents that that work with a lot of baby boomers to list their homes and get them into another situation yeah Yeah. so i'd be producing content for baby boomers i'd be thinking about how to make connections with baby boomers they still hold the majority of the wealth in this country Mm -hmm. been saying that a lot i'd get to know them i'd be friends with them okay all right the boomers not a racket all right we've got a a marketeer you want to get into the marketeer you want to give our uh, our two cents on who won well, yeah, last so, week. So let's 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 announce the the, right. the market like? here. So I can I be honest? I actually, yeah. um, I mean, gosh, we got a lot of good feedback. People well, loved it. Yeah, we got great feedback. Um, I, you know me, I'm a I'm a lover of mm. parodies. I lo- I I want to actually do my own, um, which you're totally against. So. I, I did sort of want to lean towards the Old Town. Um, what's the Old name Town of it? Old Town Rap. Is that what it was? Old Town Rap. I but got some horses I, in the back. But I do have to say that Swaff, I do. Swaff hates that. I know. But I do pre, I do prefer the Chi actually, mostly because I've never seen it done before. So that, in my opinion, was the winner of last week, period. 
All right. And you? Well, I didn't understand that yes. one from the movie reference. Because you've never seen Love Actually, so obviously it went never way it. over your head. Never seen Love Actually. I'll never see it. So I'm going to take the 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 country the rap, the old yeah. town country rap, because yep. it can get stuck in your head. The minute you start saying that, uh, I got horses in the back. It'll be in, it'll be in your head all day. I don't know about that. Oh yeah. You think? Yeah. Just listen to it once. It'll be in your head. So I'm going to give them. The win. Uh, but we've got a Marketeer of the Week this week. Yes. So right. we got an email from our from lovely Inman. friend, Danny. Danny, Inman. shout out to... Big thanks to Danny because... She's, she's, a, she's a... This show being at episode 99 is... Uh, she's a partner. She's, she's a an partner ally. in crime. Yeah. She's an ally. She's, she's been really supportive and, and helping us get some, some uh, eyeballs on Inman. Appreciate you, Danny. Appreciate Inman. And... Uh, let, let's get into the this week's yes. marketeer that was sent to Danny. Yes. So, um, are you I've prepared? Got I've got it up. Are you because pre- I'm not prepared. You're not prepared. I've got uh, this one is called Around Town, the the uh, yes. the series. The series. So it it sounds like it's a multiple part series by Ben Nemec. Mm-hmm. Nemec. 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 So, do we know where he's from? He's a yeah, broker. Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah, I love it. He's got a little bit of an accent. And um, so there's two there's two episodes so far. He drives around in his BMW that clearly somebody gave to him um, for advertising purposes. Yeah, he's doing a local advertisement with the BMW company. We spend quite a bit of the front end talking about the vehicle. Mm, um, I think it's brilliant. By the way, yeah, I I wanted to fast forward it a little bit at the beginning, but I did enjoy. I did enjoy. You actually made a a a, a very. You, it reminded you a little bit of um, Seinfeld. Seinfeld, Coffee and Cars. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think it's fabulous. I think it's super entertaining. I actually enjoyed it a little bit more towards like the middle because you could tell his guest was getting a little bit more um, comfortable. Mm. That was fun. Um, they get out of the car. They make a few stops. Like. It's sort of it's sort of like a like a vlog style. I, what, I I enjoyed it. I have to say. Yeah, for me, I mean, besides Danny sending it over to us because a few people had sent it to her, um, I, I think for me the reason it's really the marketeer of the week because this is somebody Ben is doing a good job of connecting with his community. So he's yes. obviously creating a relationship with the people at the BMW owner mm-hmm. that now can bring him other relationships mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. potential referrals, mm-hmm. more awareness. He's giving them awareness around the community by driving down the what is it an M5? Is that what no, it was? No, no, no. He had the X7. The X7. Yep. And mm-hmm. the X7. Yep. Uh, I don't know my BMWs. Nicole's one of those classic real estate agents that drives a BMW. And it's white. Yeah. Maybe you should get the and it's white, <laughs> Nicole White. All right. Uh, maybe you should get somebody to sponsor your your, your ride. My ride. Yeah. Wow. Right mm. around. I think I think you should do that. I think it's show. again. Nicole's I, rip I, you I off enjoyed then. it. I enjoyed it. Um, Byron will include the link on wherever he does that. Um, but I I did enjoy it. I thought that he's doing a great job. Congratulations, Ben. Um, if you sent it to Danny, thank you, whomever. But that was that was great. Yeah, I we'll link it. it up as always. We'll link up. Uh, should we link up last week's marketeers if, so people know what we're talking sure, about? Sure, why not? We can relink that back up, Ness. If once you listen to this, do that. Maybe you can relink Ness uh, or link up some some of Suave's rap since this is episode ninety nine. Suave, who does. All the work here for the real word behind the scenes. He's a he's a real rapper, not like the rapper. the parody rapper. So Ness, so I've sent. We always have to ask him before we go like deep into it. Wrong into the rap. We have to. We always. You're gonna play some Jay Z for me on this episode. We're gonna break the rules. We're gonna pop in a little Jay Z. Uh oh. Do you think we'll be shut down? No, I don't think so. Uh, we're also gonna put put Suave's link up. Give Ness your best, the best stuff for episode 99. Send it over. He to was Ness. just on tour too. I know. Swab's the real deal, so check him out, and uh, we appreciate you guys. We're looking forward to doing episode 100 next week before I go to Florida. I mean, pressure's on. Pressure is on. We will be at a special, right? We'll be at a special. Potentially. Uh Uh-oh. Maybe. Yeah. We're gonna. We're the house gonna... closes on Monday, so we. We haven't told them what it means the yet. Through. They know. They don't know yet. It's well, gonna be a surprise. Could be a surprise. Damn Tune that. in to episode 100. We might be kicking it back. If you want to send us a video for episode 100. If you've got a question, a specific question you've been or following along. Or how much they love us. Or, I want, like, you, I or love you just Nicole. want praise. Nicole can watch that on loop. <laughs> but if you've got a question for the show, <laughs> send it in to us. You can email it, Byron at oneandcompany.com or Nicole at oneandcompany.com or you can DM us and we can figure out you what we're going to do. You liked talking this episode. Yeah. So we must be at like 40 minutes. Yeah, did you say anything? I mean. Do you want to have a couple minutes? I'm for good. The people? No. Bye, guys. guys. Keep it real.